You're listening to the Act As If Podcast with Coach Roel. Real life success stories in business and investing as they happen. And now, here's your host, Coach Roel. All right, welcome. Coach Rowell here once again with part two of my two-part interview with Elliot Mould. If you uh, missed the previous one, make sure that uh, you stop this recording and then go check out his part one. It's quite interesting. Uh, part one, as a review, was our Act As If interview. So we were talking about uh, with Elliot as if he was already achieved all the great things that he had set out for himself. And then part two is just in really the present time. We're recording this in November of 2022. And uh, we're just going to kind of just chat and and uh, find out how that experience was for Elliot and how much of that stuff was true and how much of it was act as if. So welcome back, Elliot. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good, good. It's funny because uh, as we're recording this, it's really li- literally two minutes after we finished the last one. But <laughs> but when it's published out there, it's probably going to have a week in, in, in between time. So yeah, it was really great. Yeah, I have to congratulate you. That was you were able to just dive right into it, and and, and uh, I could see the the look in your eyes was like you were really living it for those for that fifteen twenty minutes that we were talking there. So, how much of that and, and start with every whatever part you want. How much of that is objectively true now, and where are you today? So, give us a bit of perspective. Um, sure. So, our. our our real estate journey has been going on for a while. And I mean, it's the biggest part of there's I have my family, there's uh, real estate and, and old, old cars. Those, those are my priorities in life. So the real estate thing, um, we, we are doing, uh, so we've got currently have one flip going on, on, um, we closed on a property about two weeks ago. We've got maybe three weeks ago. Now we've got a flip happening in a, in a small town in Michigan. Why are we in a small town in Michigan? The people uh, I got connected with it with a preset sort of team that was already there and created through um, a Canadian who's teaching. Oh, here's how to invest in small markets in Ohio and Michigan. So uh, through that training, I had an opportunity to purchase a house. Contract with our, so that's ongoing. So we we are investing in the U.S. We are doing our active uh, investment strategy, which is these flips. Um, I do also have a property. It's been delayed, but it's closing now, I think on the 3rd of December, no, uh, the following Monday, um, in Philadelphia. And it, it, it is, it is a townhouse. It is just like the Rocky movies. It is gutted. Um, and the contractor is going in there and, and uh, he's got a three month timeline. He typically does these houses as just like this, uh, for investors. It's a very common type of house in Philadelphia and it's in an area that's up and coming. So those are all the things that are, that are actually happening. So, um, in, t- in terms of opportunity, you know, just for an example, like when we were looking at Philadelphia, the, the ARV we anticipated for the flip uh, was 340. So these are, I'm not buying million dollar houses here. Uh, it was 340, uh, purchase price is 150, reno was 95, I think. And and we're like, you know what, that's that's a pretty good return. We were getting financing and, and we are. And then the appraiser went in for the financing and the appraiser came back and said, as is value, 195. So we just, we always, You'd coached it to make money in the buy. So we didn't realize how much money we were making in the buy, um, but we made this $45,000 right there, essentially. Um, and then after a repair value uh, appraisal was uh, 440. Wow. And we were using 340. Wow. Yeah, so I'm not expecting 440 on the sale, you know, but it just really no, it helps me feel good about my 340. Maybe, maybe it's four, right? So we're you know uh, we're running around here and 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 we're hearing all this panic in the in the media in canada and, and ottawa and ontario and, and stuff like that about the market and oh this and that and i'm seeing it happen as a realtor so to know that there is opportunity in the u.s um you know the the appraised value is not necessarily you know uh it's not market value but it's a good indicator and typically when it comes to financing they'll be conservative with their numbers so uh that was nice to see 
And I've also realized that when you're looking at, when you're comparing $800,000 properties and you're talking about an interest rate increase of 3% or 4%, that's a big, big difference on an $800,000 property compared to a two or $300,000 property, right? Yes. So yes. we, uh, the more expensive properties are something that we hope to get into because, you know, the more expensive the property, potentially the more money you may make in a, in a flip, right? You're not going to make $200,000 on a $50,000 house. You might make $200,000 on a five or $600,000 flip, um, potentially. But, um, but yeah, so we know that staying in the safe price points where everybody can, almost everybody can afford it, whether it's a first time home buyer, a, a downsizer, or somebody moving out of, um, you know, maybe they own a condo and they want to have, they want to buy a house instead. So there's all these different ways that we're sort of planning our, our, um, our, our uh, backup sort of plans or, or, you know, making sure that we're reaching the most, uh, the, the most buyers, potential buyers. So we're, that's what we're doing. So those two things are real. Um, for sure. That's what we're actually doing now. We are interested and I didn't uh, discuss it too much. Our, our, our initial goal was multifamily and we're still wanting to do that. Um, but we know that well, what I've learned is that the way to get better financing in general is through experience. And so the more the, these fix and flips we do, the more credibility we have, the better financing we will get for future fix and flips, but also to the better financing we can get in general. Um, and that's what we've, so that's what we're working towards. I also know that doing a flip in a prop in, in a place for four or five months and then selling it. And then afterwards deciding, you know, do I want to do it here again or do I want to go somewhere else is quite, um, uh, flexible and, and low stress. Um, but picking a market to start building a portfolio of long-term buy and hold multifamilies typically takes more time and research and it's more of a commitment to that area. And, uh, so, yeah, so we were kind of feeling overwhelmed with, uh, Oh, well, where do we pick to buy our first multi? Well, for that reason. And also the financing reason we've just, these, we've been going with these flips. They're, they're easier right now. And, uh, and we also realize, Hey, this is probably, if, if these go well, this is something that we should just continue always doing in the background. So, mm -hmm. um, as opposed yeah. to just a, a means to an end at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then the and whole the, Florida also, thing, we also, are you, are you currently, um, uh, heading down to Florida? Uh, let our, our no. listeners know. No, I'm not. Um, so originally Aaron and I, I, I you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to convince her to go down for a couple of weeks in the new year. Um, and that will be our first taste. Of, we haven't had a lot of family time traveling. Um, Aaron has not really had a good, t like a, uh, um, a good, uh, ex exposure to Florida in recent years. Um, I think she went down to like Daytona when she was in university and that's the last time she's been there. So I'd like to get her down into that kind of, uh, you know, weather or, or, or you know, just a different place and not be like going to a resort where, Hey, we come this day, we leave this day in between. We do all these things more of, uh, having a place, cooking our meals, uh, how, letting the kids watch TV, you know, more of, um, like we'll have some plans to do things, but also more like regular living, but somewhere else and, uh, and, and, and try to maybe accomplish that this, this year and, uh, visit with some, uh, we made some friends, um, through three your course, uh, that are down there that we stay in touch with. And, uh, we hope to, uh, touch with the, they, they, they moved down there. So we'll touch base with them and spend some time with them. And I also have some friends in, in Florida as well. So, yeah, so we are not going down for the winter. I hope to maybe go down for a couple of weeks for a family getaway. And it's, will probably be more like, uh, off the cuff. And, uh, because, and I say that because I, I don't actually have a plan yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so out of necessity, it's kind of going to be like, Hey, what if we plan a trip for two weeks from now that we haven't discussed yet? <laughs> nice. Live like a local for a bit. That would, that sounds awesome. I, I think it's, there's nothing, uh, I mean, you can go to Orlando and, and go on vacation. That's yeah, for sure. But I think to go and like rent a house, which is where we would be living and staying over a winter somewhere in a house, 
um, hopefully with its own pool and be able to en enjoy that and uh, not feel like every day has to be packed with like plant pre-planned special activities from start to finish to get the most out of the trip, but actually just to have some downtime, um, you know, like a, like a getaway. So that's, uh, yeah, I, th I think we'll, we'll do that for sure. So. Mm -hmm. so what was it like when I put you on the spot in the previous uh, interview, part one of the interview, where you were acting as if you had all that stuff? Like I, I mentioned that there was kind of a look in your eye, like you, it really seemed like you were visualizing it. Uh, can you kind of walk us through that experience? Was it, was it normal? Was it weird? Was it, do you do this kind of thing often? You know, give us some background on that. For sure. Uh, well, it's interesting. You, you saw that because, you know, before that call, you said, Hey, so I hope you took some time to plan for this. And I was like, and, and it, it, it comes easy. I think, I t I'm not not just because I'm typically used to like improv when it comes to listing videos or stuff like that. I'm kind of, but it, but it actually came easy because I've I wouldn't say I've been purposefully visualizing it, you know, as like an exercise that I commonly do for my own personal growth. Um, I I just think it's I feel like we have like a direction now, and, and I feel like you know. You were a first exposure to investing in the in the U.S. So at the beginning, it was like, where can I go to have a car, an old car that I can drive in the winter months? That was the first thing. So we got connected a long, long, like even now talking today, we got connected in the end of the winter, in the spring, maybe. Um, so that's how it all started. And then since then, since that door opened with you in terms of thinking, um, we, we've seen this whole other opportunity for our growth in the U.S. in general, right? So that's where we're at now. And I really feel like it's kind of become the the key to get, like, realistically getting to where we want to be in in a, in a shorter amount of time. And my, my goal is not to be retired and do nothing and just sit around the pool all day. That's not my goal. My, my goal is to just be able to have fun in real estate and and enjoy it and not have to feel like, oh, this is what I need to be doing to support my family. It's more like, I just get to do this. It does support my family, but I don't need it. I just, I really enjoy it. And that's, so as I was talking about it, um, yeah, it, it felt good and it also felt realistic. So, um, you know, if I was to sit here and say, oh, I'm sitting around the pool drinking uh, daiquiris or whatever, you know, it might be, and, and I don't have to do anything. I just drive around all day and my kids are gone and no, 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 Like that would be, a, that's not realistic. So, um, for me, the, the freedom is, is not having nothing to do. Freedom is having a time to do what I would like. And sometimes what I would like to do is work on real estate because that's one of my passions. So, um, fortunately that passion can also turn into, uh, a good return financially as well, which, which helps support the family. So, um, yeah, so it, it was, it was a nice experience to talk like that. And as I'm sitting here, it didn't feel phony. Can you stand on that? Yeah. Like I, I realistically, it, it's something that I could say like, this is, this is not just because I'm I'm trying to do this exercise, and it's actually because what I'm saying is along the lines of where, where, where our trajectory, and uh, I, I I actually legitimately feel like you know we're we're still early in the in the USA stuff, and I'm sure we'll we'll hit some some bumps in the road and stuff like that, and we've already had to uh, you know overcome any obstacles as it is as it relates to finding our way with the with the uh, you know our our corporate structure and and financing for the first time and all these documents and having to create this document to get the approval for that document and all this stuff um so it's uh we, we've been doing that but i i really feel like we're on the right path and i feel like we've found the answer to our story and it's just a case of like i don't like the word exploiting it but yeah it, it's just a case of of doing the thing now and reaping the rewards and the benefits um whereas before you know we talked about how 
having freedom of time through real estate. And in Canada, when I realistically turned around and looked at it, it was like, man, like if I'm just focusing on passive income, that's it's, it's still a long ways away, you know, before, you know, this is still the long game. Whereas I feel like now we've, we've fast forwarded things and um, yeah. So that's, that's how I felt. I felt like we're, we're doing it. I believe in it. Um, you know, and we're taking action. So the, the initial uncertainty we've, we've hopped over that. So not only have we made the decision to do it, but we actually like we've closed on properties. So like we have a property the work's happening. I'm getting updates from the contractor. You know, it's, I've got the, I'm finally allowed to send wire transfers from my American bank account online now, my business bank account. I just got my, we just got our ITINs this week, right? right? Uh, we already had our EINs. Like, so these things are all actually happening. Whereas, you know, at the beginning, it's like, oh, this is a great idea. But I feel really good about the fact that we've been taking action. And it's so been when was the beginning? blind, a lot of it. Bring us back to that. Uh, when, when, when was the beginning? Uh, was that a few months ago? Was it last year? The beginning was when was uh, when I reached out to you. Um, I had maybe just before that started talking to my friend here, who is my mortgage broker in town, and I had been hearing about investing in Florida as like you know like something that's a lot of people are starting to do. And you know, as Canadians, like we we got to go. We always you want to be ahead when you're an investor or when whatever it might be in business, you want to be ahead of the curve. You don't want to be doing the thing that, that somebody started doing three years ago. Now everybody's doing it. And then jump, jumping in, like you kind of want to find the next thing to stay ahead of the, as opposed to just repeating what everyone else has done, because then it's saturated. So started thinking about the U S not to say that nobody else was investing in the U S I mean, you've been there for a while now. So obviously, you know, I'm not the first one. Um, but, uh, we started having the questions and then your name came up about two or three months into the process. So did we maybe start talking in March, April, I think? Oh, when we, March, we April of 2022. Um, That's the context I'm looking for. 20, yeah, sorry, 2022. So we're still in 2022. Um, we did our online course with you maybe in, I want to say April. I went down to a mastermind because I was like, I, I need to, I need more of this. Like I, I need to really get right into this potential idea. I went down to Florida in May and that's a question mark, but I think it was May for a week and a half to Cape Coral, a mastermind for uh, Canadians investing in the U S. Um, so I had your thing. Investor Snowbird um, program in my mind. Okay. And then it was like one of the questions I had from your program was, well, how do we get the financing? Regular banks aren't going to finance me in Canada because I have, we already have too much stuff. So it's like, you know, how am I going to get American financing in the States? And I, I didn't know. So I was trying to find you have that part of that too with your program. So, uh, yeah. So fast forward now, um, you know, went down to in-person Investor Snowbird in uh, in October. Uh, spent two weeks down there, um, along with another course about uh, flipping in the U.S. and other pro. So we we saw that um, conference. But I was really so down for all you. this. Just to recap, all this happened like just within this year alone. Like so, March till November. That is what seven months, eight months, eight months. So all this changes for you uh, to do with the U S is just within the last eight months. Yes. And it's probably would have been sooner if I didn't have to wait so long to go down to your in-person course. Yeah. Sorry. It's, <laughs> just I, I know you wanted, I know you wanted to come down in the summer, but nobody else wanted to come down in the <laughs> no, summer. I know, it's more <laughs> I'm just teasing, but no, it's um, it was really weird because you were the first course that we took. And, and I've been trying to get Aaron involved in this stuff, but it's just so hard because Aaron has a regular full-time job and we have these two little girls and two and three year old girls often want their mom and dad's like a stranger, right? So like, who's this stranger in the house? Like who let this guy in? Like mommy, mommy. So she's got a lot of, and as much as we've tried to have her being a part of this, she actually was a part of that first course, the online, um, a training that we did with you back then. So, um, and then it, it's funny because like so much had happened and leg work and stuff like that. And then it culminated with, with going down to Florida where she was supposed to be there with you in October. Um, she wasn't able to come, but 
that sort of just happened to line up with a lot of pieces falling in place at the same time through through the different sort of networks that we've created and um and yeah and uh, so that's been about the time so now we've like i said we'll have two as of first week of december we'll uh, we'll own two american properties both are flips and uh, we're actively looking for that third one um to to the three is that kind of first milestone that we're hoping for and uh yeah and meanwhile we're, we're still uh, i mean uh, i'm still working as a realtor here um and i have my clients and uh, the market right now is a little bit uh, interesting so that has you know it hasn't been as busy as it, it might have been six months or a year ago but uh, that's okay because it's kind of freed up some space for me to to be focusing on our on our investments and and I still have ongoing renovation projects in in Ontario at our you know at our own properties that we're renovating or adding units to and looking at taking on more of those projects as well here and uh, yeah I'd like it to be something where it's you know just always on the go always happening in the background and have the right teams and people in place to be able to scale um, without having to give up more of my time. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to uh, forewarn you, kind of put you on the spot a little bit. You, um, so you have these goals and, and it's pretty impressive. I'll, I'll say this, not just, you know, I don't, I don't need to blow smoke at you or anything over the last seven, eight months, how much you've done. The um, And you've been speaking in detail about what you want to accomplish in the next year, year and a half. So the question to kind of put you on the spot is, is why, what's stopping you from making it happen in less than a year? So when we were, before we started talking, before we hit record, uh, you were saying, yeah, maybe about a year, year and a half more. It seemed like they were more comfortable with that. What about a year or less than a year? Is there any details that we didn't discuss? that uh, would hinder you from doing it in less than a year? If I could challenge you as as a coach for the next few more minutes, you know, what about 10 months? Could it be done in 10 months? All that, all the great stuff you're talking about? So could it be done in 10 months? Uh, in, in 10 months, I may not, I may not uh, freely own, uh, I don't want to say I would, it would have, it was going to have a mortgage on it anyway, but I may not have the opportunity to have a property in Florida. That's that big, um, without having to have it as a short term rental while we're not there. Um, so the way I see it, it's if I wanted to just take a leap of faith right now, right? Like next month, I probably could. Um, I, I typically like to, <laughs> I would rather be like, listen, things aren't terrible right now. So, so let's, let's, you know, some people might say easing into something is like, oh, maybe I'll buy one property and do one a year in the U S no, no, no. I'll have 10 on the go at a time. That's fine. Uh, um, if, if we can get the money together. So I would like to really be able to have that. Okay. It's right now. It's like, it's starting to happen. I can see it happening. And, and I'm, and I'm optimistic. The next step would be like, okay, it's been happening for a while. It's really happening. This is great. And, and that's kind of where I want to be. Um, and then, then there's the, the other things that we are the non-negotiables. Like if Aaron, well, it's, it's a nego it is a negotiable. If she wants to pay back her time to the government or not before, or before leaving. Right. So those are those things. And I think the timeline for, um, that I mentioned, it might take me more time to convince Aaron to, <laughs> <laughs> to start staying away half time. So I, I joke about that, but that's, that's a good problem to have. So, um, yeah, I, I think that it, it can happen sooner. Um, and it's, it's just about action and how fast we're taking that action. Right. So, um, yeah, like we've got these two properties. We're we're still using our own money, um, and we're getting some financing. But converting, I've been converting Amer Canadian money to American, and it it has gotten a little bit better the last week and a half or two weeks. Um, but at one point, like it was costing me 137 Canadian to buy a hundred thousand American. So mm -hmm. those are you know it goes through our and we're trying to do this at the beginning like 
by like on our own um, at first. So yeah, who knows if I if I wanted to take people up on their offers right now, um, I could you know erase that uh, the, the 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 not having enough money dilemma at first, right? So if I said mm-hmm. if I wanted to take on investors for sure, and 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 do more private money, and just say I'm I'm doubling down, and if somebody wants to invest now, even though I don't have as much track record there as I'd like to before working with an investor, if I wanted to sort of have, uh, have a little bit of give on on that, then maybe. But hold could. on, I want to I want to catch you on that one, and and again put you on the spot for, for the whole world to hear and, and watch. Uh, you have a track record uh, and, and feel free to share as much as you want, but in terms of your current portfolio, what, what are the kinds of things you've done, no matter where it is, whether it's local to you in you know, Ottawa, Canada, Canada area, Ontario, or what you're currently doing, but you know, at risk of gushing or, or being boist, boastful, I'm putting you on the spot. Tell us uh, what you've done so far in real estate. What crazy things so, have you done? Uh, well, the craziest thing we've done is one that we're currently uh, is currently ongoing. Um, it's taking an existing building and turning it into eight separate apartments, uh, high end. Uh, I don't want to say luxury, but all, all our stuff is high end. A- any properties that we, any units we turn over now, unless it's in an area that really doesn't support that, um, you know, we're quartz counters, we're uh, stainless steel appliances, including all appliances, laundry, everything, and, and we're separating it out all mechanical systems. So everyone has their own AC, their own uh, hot water combi boiler, all those things. So that's what we're, we're currently working on. So we've done a lot of value you add projects, um, you know, everything from taking a single family home to converting it to two legal units to, you know, triplex to a fourplex to now we're doing a empty shell to an eight plex. Um, we're looking at a project now, which, which would be in a very old building on, on the main street in one of our preferred markets that has some commercial in the main floor. Um, and we can add about 10 units above it. So that's the next thing. So yeah, so we, we are doing those. Um, I typically haven't done flips. I've done what, they, what you might call flip to yourself, which is, uh, you know, the Burr strategy and uh, improve the property and then uh, rent it out and refinance it and pull your money back out. So we've done some what they call perfect Burrs or even better than perfect Burrs where we got all our money back out plus extra. So we've done those. So for me, I have a track record here in Canada. Um, and for me, I really like to know what I'm talking about. So when I'm speaking to anybody, whether it's a potential investor or just another another uh, real estate investor um, or whoever, I really want to. F- I really want to be. I don't want to say an expert, but just about in what I'm talking about. So I think for me, being able to say, "Here's my, here's my first time through. Here's how it works," even to the point where it's like, "Here's how long it took me to get the money." paid to me after the sale of this flip because you know there's withholdings depending on what your structure is and how much are they going to withhold and when are you going to get that money back these are all things that if someone was to ask me that question right now the answer would be i don't know and i typically don't like giving that answer when it comes to real estate so that's um and there may be some stuff like oh what's uh what's the governor of uh, this state saying about nah, 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 where you happen to own this house? And I'm, I, I, that I can say, I don't know. About. Um, but, uh, but as it relates to the process, I'd like to have all the answers. And right now I don't like, I'm finding that out as we go in the U S it's, it's very, very much right now, learn as you go. So we've done one cash deal and now we're doing the second one's a finance deal. So soon enough i'll be able to say okay here's what the process was like to get a fix and flip loan for financing on a property because i will have completed that and i will and then it will close and i'll have it i won't st- still yet be able to say here's what it's like to uh pay out the lending on a fix and flip loan and here's how it went and then here's how i got my money back so um and just like on the first one we bought cash I don't know what the withholding is going to be. Um, I'm not an expert with the tax setup right now with our with our with our corporate structure and and what th- there may be withholding. There may not be withholding. Um, there's no for sure answer on how much that will be. So those are the things I'd like to. Yeah, I have a track record. I don't have USA fix and flip track records yet. So. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yes. Well, by the time this gets out there onto the interwebs and in the podcast universe, then you will have those answers. So in closing, I'll ask you the same uh, question. If people like the cut of your jib or your pedigree, or they say, <laughs> hey, I want to reach out to this Elliot Mold guy, where can they reach you? What's the best way to, to reach out to you at present? For sure. So like, I, like I'm, I typically spend all my time trying to expand and, and doing what we're just talking about and implementing. So I, I'm, I spend more time on that than I do on the fancy, sexy uh, technology stuff. So uh, for social media and things like that, honestly, like I said, old, old school and simple, it can reach me directly. Um, I'm not, I'm not above uh, receiving a direct message from somebody uh, right to my personal Facebook account. So Elliot Mould, E-L-L-I-O-T. M-O-U-L-D. You can find me pretty easily on there uh, and send me a message. Or if you prefer, you can send me an email um, at Elliot Mold at Keyworth Properties.ca. So K-E-Y-W-O-R-T-H Properties, all one word, dot C-A. Those are the best ways. Um, yeah. I mean, even if you were to find my number online somewhere um, through through my, my realtor p- business stuff or whatever, you can feel free just to call me directly as well always uh happy to chat for for people who who are you know good people and um and 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 share ideas and stuff like that well that's excellent well congratulations once again a lot has happened over the last just even this eight months this year as of this recording and uh i'm gonna hold you to it with we've got it now you've got a part one of the interview there so it's going to be out there forever and at some point in the near future we're going to look back to it and be like hey look at that that young guy didn't know what he was into with all this big talk. And we're going to say, look, you've actually done um, hopefully a hundred percent of everything you set out to do. So that's great. So once again, uh, this is uh, Coach Rowell of the Act As If podcast with part two of a two-part interview with Elliot Mould up in Ottawa, Ontario, and soon to be international, which is super exciting. (laughs) So once again, thanks again, Elliot. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Act As If podcast with Coach Rowell. Real-life success stories in business and investing as they happen. 